Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to discuss one very popular pattern widely used in software engineering project or data engineering projects and that is transactional outbox pattern. So today our topic is sending reliable event notification with transactional outbox pattern. We will try to explore why we need this particular outbox pattern that is what problem our this particular pattern solves and how to implement this using various AWS services related to that we are going to explore today in this video with in-depth intuition. So let's try to understand one problem with a practical scenario. Consider our Zomato delivery pattern. For example from the left hand side here new orders are coming up right. And here we are having some sort of order microservice which is consuming all those new order and then they prepare the food and call our shipment microservice which basically take care of the shipment. So here I can write prepare shipment. Okay. So order microservice here notify our shipment microservice whenever a new order is created. So here I can write notify. So this is called synchronous approach. Why? Because as soon as new orders are coming in order microservice, there and there it is notifying to our shipment microservice. They are tightly coupled. If suppose there are huge amount of new orders coming in order microservice, huge number of notifications will be going to our shipment microservice or shipping microservice also. So that's why it is called tightly coupled architecture. If the order microservice need to scale up, then in that case our shipping microservice also need to scale up in the same amount or scale down in the same amount whenever order microservice scale down right. So this is one of the pattern in synchronous approach or tightly coupled architecture and there are some disadvantages also. For example due to some reason if order microservice not able to notify our shipping microservice that is suppose server is down or due to some network issue or API throttling. For any this kind of reason, if our shipment microservice is not able to consume new notification, then our whole system will be down. It is not like our order microservice will keep on taking new order and later it will notify. Because they are tightly coupled, there is no queue or storage location in middle to store all the notification when our shipping microservice is down, right? So in that case, the whole system will be down and as a result our business will be impacted. So this kind of synchronous approach or tightly coupled architecture is not generally preferred architecture in our real time projects. So rather than that what we generally do, we put some sort of queue in between two microservices. So what happens this particular order microservice instead of directly notifying our shipping microservice, it publish those events in this queue and shipping microservice based on certain polling interval consume those events or notifications from the queue. So that way if suppose for some reason if the shipping microservice is down, the order microservice no need to stop consuming new orders. It can consume new orders and store the orders temporarily in this queue or event bus kind of service. And later when our shipping microservice will be up and running again, then it will start consuming the messages from the queue in FIFO order and process all the messages and ship them accordingly as per order, right? So this is basically a preferred architecture that putting some sort of queue in middle. So there comes our asynchronous approach. So here we are basically decoupling our two microservice order microservice and shipping microservice using an event bus in middle and very popular event bus like Kafka is also used SQS can be also used. So like this there are various event bus which can be used in middle of two microservices. So what happens in this particular architecture? Here new order comes in and here order microservice initially write the order in some sort of DB. So here I can write order DB and it publish that particular event in Kafka or event bus. Okay. And what happens the shipping microservice will pull the Kafka topic. Here I can write pulling consumer. And based on certain time interval, it can continuously pull the Kafka topic which is sitting within this particular cluster or event bus. And then in FIFO order, it can consume the messages or orders and then prepare for shipment and send it accordingly. Right? So this is our asynchronous approach. Now what problem we might face in this particular architecture, let us try to understand. And the problem name here is 
the dual right problem. So what is that? Let us try to understand with the same example. So here suppose new order is coming up. Okay. What order microservice will do? It will write the information in order DB. And here we are having our event bus. There also it will publish the event. Right. Now think about a situation that suppose at any particular point of time due to some reason network failure or some reason this particular event that is publishing the message in our Kafka topic or Kafka cluster is successful but writing the order message in order DB this is not successful. So in that case what problem will happen? So order microservice has published that particular event in event bus or Kafka. So shipment microservice will consume that particular event and it will prepare for shipment and it will ship on time, right? But to the user, it will show that in the order DB, the order is not yet written. So to the user who is making an order, to him or her, it will appear. The order placement is not successful. So he or she try to make again another order, okay? So that time what problem might happen that time maybe in order DB the data will be written successfully and in the event bus also the message will be published successfully. So it is basically second time same order is made right. So due to this two place writing one it is writing in Kafka one it is writing in order DB due to two place writing or due to dual write this particular problem is happening that two times the user might get the same order. So that is problem. Or maybe for example, you can consider another problem that in order DB, the message or the order information is written successfully due to some reason in Kafka cluster, publish of the event is not successful. So in that case, to the user, it will appear that user has placed the order successfully, but it will never go for shipment because the event is not published in the event bus or Kafka itself. So we can clearly understand from this particular discussion that dual write is making a problem. And we cannot easily roll back also because in database level rollback is possible. But when you are writing the message in Kafka, then most of the time the rollback functionality is not available, right? So no need to think that I will implement some sort of rollback commit functionality in database that will work with respect to this particular place, but how this particular place will be handled because in Kafka, most of the time it don't support that kind of rollback commit mechanism or transaction mechanism. Right. And here two different place transaction is happening. One transaction happening here. Another transaction is happening here. So which transaction you will commit? Either both transaction simultaneously need to be committed or simultaneously need to be rolled back. Is it possible? No, it is not possible because one transaction is happening in database. Another transaction is happening in Kafka. Both are different system. So parallelly rolled back or parallel commit it is not possible. Right. So we can easily understand that dual write is making a problem. Now the question comes how we can solve this. So that time comes our outbox pattern. So asynchronous approach with transactional outbox pattern. Let us try to understand. So what we are going to do in this particular use case. So here from the left hand side as earlier use case here new order is coming up. And what the order microservice will do. It will write the message that new order came in order DB. As well as. As part of the same transaction in that same database in another table, it will write an event. This table is called outbox table. So again, I am repeating what this order microservice is doing. Within that same database, there are two tables available. One is our order DB, which is storing actual orders. One is outbox table, where as part of the same transaction, the information it is writing that a new order is created or new order is updated or deleted any kind of OLTP operation it is writing in outbox table as part of same transaction when it is writing in this order table or order table okay right and from this outbox table using change data capture or some trigger based mechanism it will publish those events so here I can write publish event it will publish those event in our Kafka or event bus. Okay. And from this Kafka, our shipping microservice will consume the event and prepare for shipping. So that way what is happening that dual write problem is avoided here. Earlier, the order microservice was writing one information in a table, another information in a Kafka cluster. So that's why the problem of dual write was appearing because both cannot happen in same transaction. 
But here in this case, if you observe order DB as well as outbox table, that is another table where it is writing all the events so that insert, update, delete, whatever is happening, it is writing as part of same database. So same database means within same transaction it can write either both transaction will be committed successfully or if any one fails it will basically roll back both right it will not happen like our earlier situation that one is committed successfully one need to roll back and that time basically inconsistency appear right so in this particular use case because both outbox table and order table are available in same database so the insert update delete can happen within both tables as part of same transaction so they will be in sync and next what we can do from this outbox table using change data capture using debezium connector or some sort of trigger we can publish the event in kafka cluster even we can publish those cdc information from our actual order table also not a problem but instead of giving burden to this particular table for maintenance of order and as well as for cdc so if you give both responsibility to a single table that time it might be overburdened so that's why we basically keep another table which is taking care of publishing those events in kafka cluster using cdc right or change data capture we can see so this way the dual write problem can be avoided so i hope you understood the outbox pattern a real world implementation of outbox pattern can be done with dynamodb stream that is here placement of order can be done in our order microservice the information can be written in our dynamodb table as soon as the information is written in dynamodb table suppose shipping microservice need to be get notified it need to consume in asynchronous manner or decoupled architecture so that time what can be done that we need to put these messages in some sort of queue so here we can use sqs queue or kafka cluster so using dynamodb stream the messages can be published in kinesis data stream from there using aws lambda we can publish those events in sqs queue and from this sqs queue using polling mechanism the shipping microservice can consume all the orders or events in fifo order and then prepare for shipment accordingly right so here dynamodb stream is helping in change data capture whatever is happening in our this particular order table which is available in dynamodb and due to this implementation of dynamodb stream kinesis data stream lambda and sqs it become asynchronous okay right so both outbox pattern advantage as well as asynchronous pattern advantage we can feel in this architecture right so i hope you understood this the outbox pattern is a very popular pattern in your project if you encounter this next time i hope you can easily recall this concept and relate with your project very easily so this particular dynamodb stream along with connection with kinesis data stream and publishing messages using lambda this pattern i have already covered in my previous video i'll be providing the link in the description box from there you can have a check explore in detail try to play with it have fun and if you implement this in real time you will have a more better idea on this concept right so this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you for watching